There are new developments in the Middle East this morning. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has disbanded the country's war cabinet, the group tasked with making critical decisions about the conflict in Gaza. Netanyahu also criticized his army's plans to hold daily tactical pauses in fighting in, in the enclave to allow for humanitarian aid deliveries. And this comes as clashes at Israel's northern border with Lebanon are intensifying. In, uh, a senior Biden advisor is expected to travel to Israel today in an effort to de-escalate tensions. And over the weekend, Israel's military warned that the intensifying clashes with Lebanon's Hezbollah militant group could trigger a serious escalation. Our foreign correspondent Chris Livesay reports from Tel Aviv, Israel. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has dissolved his war cabinet, once a coalition of rivals meant to sow unity during the conflict in Gaza. That changed last week when Benny Gantz, the leading moderate opponent of the prime minister, resigned over the absence of a plan to govern Gaza after the war. Many have feared Netanyahu would now lurch towards the hard right, the linchpin of his remaining support. The shakeup comes after Israel announced a tactical pause in the fighting along seven and a half miles of road in the Rafah area during daylight hours to allow more aid. In Gaza and around the Muslim world, it's the Islamic holiday of Eid al-Abha. Muted for this displaced family, taking refuge in a stable. Hasra. Our hearts break when we hear of people eating Eid sweets, this grandmother tells our CBS News team in Gaza. The Biden administration says Hamas is stalling a deal to release 120 remaining hostages in exchange for a ceasefire. But if this pause holds, it could at least address some of these overwhelming needs as Israeli forces pursue the remaining Hamas brigades in Rafah. In central Gaza, nine people were killed overnight when a home was struck. Here, the tactical pause does not apply. The fighting goes on. Now that war cabinet now re now dissolved was also built to sidestep those far right members of Benjamin Netanyahu's government. Sources tell CBS News that those same far right ministers will remain outside of the day to day decision making of the war. Anne Marie. All right. So that's interesting. But let's talk about the possible concerns when it comes to dissolving the war cabinet. Benny Gantz, uh, you know, a more, uh, I guess, moderate politician removed himself from the war cabinet. So you knew that there was a good possibility that things were going to sort of fall apart. But what impact could this action have on the war? You know, the, they've long suspected, the analysts have long suspected, we've all long suspected what this could mean because their alliance was always somewhat tenuous considering they were rivals. Could this mean that the gloves might come off of Benjamin Netanyahu? Some think, think yes. Others point to the fact that it's thanks to this war, at least in part, that he's still in control and suspect that it might be his, his own will to keep this war ongoing for as long as possible. But one thing is for sure, without the moderating force of Benny Gantz around, Benjamin Netanyahu now has no one left he can blame but himself for the direction that the war is going in. And so, so that's the war. But what about negotiations for the ceasefire, hostage release, prisoner release? Any of that stuff, where do things stand? If you ask the Biden administration, which laid out this proposal for a ceasefire in exchange for the release of hostages more than two weeks ago, they blame Hamas. They say the only thing standing between that ceasefire and where we are right now is the dithering and the, the lack of, of decision making on the part of Hamas in the past few days. Israel is, is warning that it will never agree to a deal in which they must first withdraw their forces from Gaza in order to get their hostages back. They say that Hamas too often has reneged on these types of deals. So if it wants to get any Anywhere, Hamas will have to agree to release the hostages first. And now we have concerns about a possible additional front. Um, we've got a senior advisor to President Biden traveling to Israel today to talk about concerns when it comes to Hez Hezbollah in Lebanon and Israel. What's on the agenda? Obviously, the primary concern is we could see an expansion of this war. 
Exactly. Both Israel and the United States are worrying quite openly about that possibility. Uh, but Israel has always held this open as, as more than just a possibility, quite frankly. Keep in mind that ever since October 7th, uh, Israel came very close to invading southern Lebanon in, in order to uh, prevent this war from happening because these types of exchanges were, were heating up around that time. Uh, they have 80,000 people. Israel has 80,000 people that it's evacuated from the border with Lebanon who are now living around the rest of the country at great cost to them personally and to the government. That's a scenario that Israel is not going to tolerate forever. So when you talk to most people in Israel, they think that this is an inevitability, whether it's today or tomorrow is the big question. Uh, that is concerning. Chris, thank you very much.